the use of fructose for treatment became very popular until the 1950s when the theory of lipids in the blood from the consumption of cholesterol and saturated fats caused basically heart disease and atherosclerosis and things like that. At the same time, they also showed that an increase in cholesterol had a direct correlation with hypothyroidism. This was back in the 1950s, and we're still trying to figure out why people have high cholesterol. So no-brainer to me to really understand cell physiology. Because remember that altered mitochondrial respiration will basically decrease T3 production, which will not allow cholesterol to be converted into pregnenolone. So now you get a backup of cholesterol because it's not. If your body's in a hypometabolic state and your cells can't actually um, utilize glucose efficiently, remember we talked about you know, cancer and things like that, or anyone in a hypometabolic state, diabetes, hypoglycemia, et cetera, hypothyroidism. Fructose can actually bypass this. So what happens is, remember we talked about fatty acids block glucose oxidation. They block how our cells utilize glucose. But fructose can bypass fatty acid inhibition and actually get into the cell and continue oxidative metabolism. That's why Ray P. fails sucrose is better for people to act, or diabetics or people that are hypometabolic or people that have MS and Alzheimer's with low brain metabolism of glucose because they can actually get fructose in the cell to actually help regulate cellular metabolism because it bypasses fatty acid inhibition. And they shouldn't be preferred over fruits. I would recommend always starting with fruit. A lot of people are very scared to use that stuff, so we recommend putting it in their coffee with cream and honey. That's the best way to start. So you can actually not get an adrenaline response from the coffee. And you're using sucrose to downregulate that. When using oranges, only use pulp-free orange juice. Pulp contains cellulose. It can actually lead to digestive upset. And in a hypometabolic state, it's even harder to break down, leading to fermentation. And according to Lita Lee, orange juice is high in salicylates, which is aspirin. So it's like drinking organic aspirin. It's very anti-inflammatory. And always avoid grape juice because it can raise estrogen. A lot of the times it'll pull the seeds out, and the seeds are very estrogenic. So just be careful of that. Now the last part is on stress and carbs. We've talked about this hands down in many lessons. We've talked about this today. The bottom line is if you don't regulate your blood sugar, you're going to get the stress response with adrenaline and cortisol. You're going to put yourself in that state of lipolysis. But P.J. Randall showed that sugar or sucrose inhibits free fatty acid release and suppresses glucose. So meet your metabolic needs. Give your body the right carbohydrates. And you have to think about why am I craving things? A lot of the times when we start, people have cravings or people come to us with cravings. What do you think it means? Your body is always talking to you. It is always talking to you. The question is, and I said this the first lesson, are you listening? Right? So think about that. So if you have cravings, what is it telling you? It's telling you, it's, it's your body saying, hey, one, maybe you're not taking in the right types of carbohydrates, which is energy. Two, maybe you're not taking in the right quantity of carbohydrates to meet your metabolic demands. Maybe the ratios of your carbs to proteins and fats are off. Or you're not eating enough because the body's primary source of fuel is sugar. And cravings are your body's way of letting you know that the energy in your body that's being provided is not sufficient to meet your metabolic needs. It's that simple. The problem is most people jump to get a bar, to get nuts and seeds and things like that. That's not going to be your, be your best, you know, choice. And as you know, because carbohydrates are broken down into glucose without the inhibiting actions on insulin by fructose. So instead of choosing a glucose, lit you know, or a high protein, you know, snack or a glucose containing snack like a, a bar or some nuts or some crackers or whatever people eat which will create an insulin response.